Have you ever thought about the mysteries that old books might hold? Secrets that are so deep they could change the way we understand history. Imagine a group of people in white robes who live alone and spend their whole lives trying to figure out what the divine is saying. These were the ascends of ancient Palestine. They were a religious group known for believing that angels could talk to people and living together as a community. But what if I told you that their story is more than just an event in history? It's part of our spiritual heritage. Imagine a community that was so devoted that they wrote about the end of the world in their scrolls. Their lives were proof of the belief that the soul lives forever and that people are reborn. With their rules of purity and sharing property, the Essenes were at the center of both history and mystery. What did they keep hidden about the universe and our existence? Could their ancient knowledge help solve problems that have stumped both scientists and spiritual seekers? The groundbreaking work of Dolores Cannon looks into the depths of time and opens a door to the Essenes' lost knowledge. Through her lens, we get to the heart of what they taught and look at the rich tapestry of their daily lives and spiritual practices. Dolores Cannon's books, Jesus and the Essenes, and They Walked with Jesus, show how the Essenes had a huge effect on the world, how they were connected to the rest of the universe, and what they left behind that will last forever. As we read her story, we are asked to think about our own place in the universe, using the teachings of a sect that lived in the background of history but are now brought to life through her exploration. The most interesting thing about their beliefs was that they thought they could talk to angels. For the Ascends, this wasn't just a myth or superstition. It was a real part of their everyday devotion and a way to connect with the divine that helped them understand the world and their place in it. Philo of Alexandria and the Jewish historian Josephus both wrote about them with a mix of interest and admiration. Their practices, such as the promise they made to remain celibate, showed that they lived a pure and dedicated life. When the Dead Sea Scrolls were found in the middle of the 20th century, they brought the Essenes out of the shadows and into the light of modern biblical scholarship. These scrolls had been kept hidden for a long time in clay jars in caves in the desert. They were a tangible link to the past and a way to access the knowledge of a sect that had lived in silence and thought about the mysteries of life. The scrolls, which had copies of the Hebrew Bible, commentaries and details about the Essens' daily lives, showed that they lived in a unique community that was set apart not only by where they lived, but also by their strong religious beliefs. They weren't just impatiently waiting for the Messiah. They were actively preparing for the establishment of a new kingdom on earth, which would include a great king and prophet. This preparation wasn't just a matter of faith. It was a way of life that affected every part of their lives, from the meals they shared to their strict adherence to a teaching that promised the soul would be born again. In this situation, Dolores Cannon's work becomes an important key to finding out the Essenes' secrets. We get an inside look at their reincarnation beliefs and their unwavering faith in communicating with the divine through her groundbreaking research. Cannon's writing doesn't just tell us about history. It lets us see the Essenes as real people who walked the earth, spreading a message of hope and transcendence. As we learn more about the Essenes and their scrolls, we come across the Manual of Discipline Scroll, which is a document that explains the basic rules for living in this isolated community. This manuscript describes a society that did well on its own and was very well organized under a strict system of government that made sure everyone could take care of themselves and work together. Another interesting discovery is the War Scroll, which tells the epic story of a cosmic battle between the Sons of Light and the Sons of Darkness. This story has deep spiritual and existential undertones. The Dead Sea Scrolls, on the other hand, reveal a maze of contradictions that puzzle both researchers and people excited to learn more. Although the Essenes say they are devoted to the Mosaic law and Jewish traditions, they also show a variety of influences that come from outside their immediate surroundings. The War Scroll shows a conflict with two sides, which is similar to Zoroastrianism's philosophical foundations. This suggests that Persian ideas may have influenced their religion while they were in exile in Babylonia. 
the unique Egyptian style of the clay jars that held these old manuscripts adds to the idea that concepts were freely shared and influenced each other across a wider area. The first scroll connected to the Qumran community was found in an Egyptian synagogue in 1897, 50 years before the famous finds in the caves in the desert. This adds another layer of mystery to the Essene story. These scrolls don't just shed light on an ancient sect, they also shed light on the rich and varied religious tapestry into which Jesus was born. This supports the ideas of historians like Josephus and shows that Judaism had many sides at the start of the Common Era. The scrolls paint a clear picture of a distinct group that stood out, not for where they lived, but for their fervent desire to carry out the prophecies and preserve the holy knowledge of their ancestors. Looking into possible connections between Jesus, John the Baptist and the Essenes starts an interesting chapter that begs more research. It seems likely that these people may have been intertwined with the bigger story of the Essenes. Based on what we know about history and Edgar Cayce's readings, the Essenes were a major religious group at the time, along with the Pharisees, the Sadducees and the culturally different Samaritans. It became even more varied when Greek and Roman troops occupied the area and when revolutionary groups like the Zealots lived there. Even among the Essenes, there was a wide range of beliefs and practices that showed how diverse this interesting group was. Edgar Cayce's insights show a range of beliefs that have been held for a long time. They make a strong connection between the different groups within the Essene community and the different Protestant denominations today. One of the biggest disagreements among the Essenes was the idea of predestination. One group held the view that events were not under the control of divine will, while another, in accordance with Josephus's writings, held the view that God was all-powerful and orchestrated the universe to carry out his deepest will. There was not only theological diversity, but also cultural diversity among both Jews and non-Jews. This shows how the Jews were able to blend in while they were living in exile in Persia. The Essenes' willingness to accept everyone broadened their understanding of the spiritual world and made it possible for more people to use their teachings. The Essenes were in charge of both Jewish laws and customs, as well as very detailed records of supernatural events like dreams, visions and mystical phenomena, along with their interpretations. This was different from other Jewish groups, like the Sadducees, who strictly followed the Torah's laws. According to Casey's readings, there were Essene schools or centers outside of Qumran. One of these was strategically located between Bethany, Galilee and Jerusalem. It was set up like a Catholic school with a figure that looks like a sister superior. Mount Carmel was home to another important Essene hub. This was a place with a lot of biblical significance because it was linked to ancient prophets. The Essenes of Mount Carmel dedicated their whole lives to waiting for the Messiah. This put them at odds with the Sadducees, especially because they believed in reincarnation or, as the Sadducees said, the resurrection of the dead. The Essenes were also interested in astrology, numerology and phrenology, but they kept these practices secret. This shows how deeply they are connected with the universe and time cycles, like the equinoxes. The Essenes are a group that is not only preserving ancient knowledge, but also actively seeking enlightenment. They do this by combining the celestial with the terrestrial, the prophetic with the mystical. They are on the verge of a new astrological era. The Essenes were important spiritual figures in their time, connecting the past and the promise of the future with their strong desire to understand and see ancient prophecies come true. The Piscean Age, which saw the long-awaited arrival of the Messiah and which Edgar Cayce correctly predicted would be a crucial period, is when the Essenes' story takes place, particularly at Mount Carmel. The school of prophets that Elijah started on Mount Carmel used to be very popular, but as the centuries before Jesus' birth went by, its numbers dropped and its spiritual fervor faded. In the middle of this decline, Phineas and El Katma, an older couple whose faith was as firm as their promise to the Lord that they would give their child to the revival of the prophetical school if they were blessed with children, stood out as a beacon of hope. 
The Aseni community at Mount Carmel went through a big change when their daughter Judy was born 24 years before Jesus' birth. Even though people were disappointed at first because they were expecting a male saviour, Judy's arrival was the start of a huge change. As a child, she learned many different traditions from the Essenes' time in exile in Persia and from their travels to Egypt, India and other places. This made her a guardian of a rich spiritual heritage. The fact that Judy kept the Essenes' records and transformed into a teacher, healer and prophetess highlighted her significant role in the community. She was seen as an example of how important women were in spiritual and community life, something that John the Baptist and Jesus also taught. This change not only changed how the Mount Carmel Ascends led, but it also set the stage for the welcoming attitude of the early Christian church. The community was special because it had both male and female leaders and a lot of different cultures. These things showed how open they were and how broad their spiritual vision was going beyond Jewish traditions to include a more universal view. In this changing setting, a Syro-Phoenician prophetess and teacher named Zermata stood out as someone who embodied what made the community unique. The people have described Zermata as a prophetess, astrologer, meditator and dream interpreter, among other things. This shows how important she was to the Essenes. With her deep esoteric knowledge, Zamata was able to be a very important teacher, counsellor and guide. The music and poetry she wrote were ways for her to share deep metaphysical insights. Her psychic abilities told her that the Messiah was going to be born in Judea soon. This led her to Mount Carmel and into the community there, where she became close with Judy, the leader of the Essenes. Zermatta's leadership went beyond the limits of her own culture, building a link between the Carmel Essenes and the Eastern spiritual world as a whole. This connection foreshadowed the journey of the Magi, who followed signs in the sky to recognize the birth of the Messiah. Zermatta figured out how to live in a time when politics were unstable because of the births of John and Jesus. She did this by meeting secretly with Judy and other important Essenes to help lead the community through these rough times. Zamata's resurrection is a vision of Judy and herself being alert together on a battlement overlooking the desert. A strange query from a person in the 20th century sparked the vision, which demonstrated how much spiritual guidance Zamata and Judy exchanged, despite having different cultural attire and traditions. The fact that Zamata died on a journey to Mount Carmel as she was getting close to her ninth decade shows how long-lasting her legacy is. Even though Judy and Zamata's stories don't directly put women in charge of the Essene movement, they do show that the roles women played in this spiritual community changed a lot over time, especially in the decades before Jesus was born. Through Dolores' teachings, we can get a more complete picture of the Essene community's variety and depth by hearing the detailed and moving stories of their lives. The renewed School of Prophets at Mount Carmel was getting ready for the coming of the Messiah, which was a turning point in the spiritual world at the time. If you're still with me, I extend my gratitude for your presence, and if you wish, consider subscribing to our channel. And remember, I have a profound love for you and hope that your life is filled with prosperity and happiness to the fullest extent possible. Thank you.